what is going on college basketball fans and welcome back to another video today we are back doing our full march madness bracket predictions you guys said you guys wanted them every two weeks we're gonna do them every two weeks and soon as we get closer to march we're gonna do these every single week i know you guys love watching this series on my channel and i love making them i love doing my predictions and we just got to update joe lenardi bracketology here on january 16th and that is the day I am recording this, and it's looking pretty good. A lot of changes from just two weeks ago uh, that happened in college basketball, but still our number one overall seed. We do have Purdue, and I'm ready to get started. just want to say subscribe if you guys are new. We do a ton of college basketball content here on the channel, so if you are a College Hoops fan and you want a ton of content as we get closer and closer to the best playoff system ever created in the history of sports, March Madness, then make sure you guys subscribe. We're getting super close to 5,000 subscribers. So yeah, guys, do that. Hit that like button if you guys enjoy. Comment who you think is going to win the championship at this point in the season, and let's get into it. So our first matchup, we do have our one seed versus our 16 seed, and our number one overall seed is the Purdue Boilermakers, and they'll be going up against either Omaha or Lafayette. And honestly... Omaha has been pretty decent this year. I'd say that they probably beat Lafayette, but I'm going to say that I don't think Purdue will lose to a 16 seed back-to-back -back year. So I'm going to say the Boilermakers do get past Omaha here in the first round here. Next up, we got our eight versus nine. We do have Nevada versus Mississippi State. A very, very fun matchup to me though. Mississippi State has been a little bit inconsistent. You know, they had a lot of hype preseason. Of course, they're getting Tolu Smith back involved in everything. So I think that they are going to be a very good team. Chris Jans is the excellent head coach, but I feel like Nevada has been more consistent. The Mountain West has been so, so good this year. And Nevada has been doing pretty well I mean yes they have a couple of losses where it kind of got away with them especially that Drake game um, where they were at home too but I think Nevada has the talent in this one um, I do think Jimmy Bell Tolu Smith could cause issues for Nevada in this one but I am going to go with the Wolfpack here uh, to win this 8-9 matchup next up we got Oklahoma versus St. Mary's now this one is interesting because Gonzaga is not playing well the West Coast Conference is looking like a one-bid league this year. And right now, it would not surprise anybody if St. Mary's beat out Gonzaga to steal the bid away from them and for Zaga to not even make the tournament. And that's kind of what Joe Lenardi has here in this one. And they they have a pretty good team. I mean, Aiden Mahini is a guy I expected um, to lead St. Mary's to, once again, a top five seed like they have been the past couple of seasons. Um, and I thought that he was maybe one of the best players that they've had over the past couple of years. He's been playing still pretty good, but their team just hasn't been there. Oklahoma's been a pretty good surprise. They're going to go through the gauntlet of the Big 12 while the West Coast Conference is kind of having a down year this year. I think I trust McCollum, these good guards, Porter Moser, um, as head coach, this will be his first March Madness as the Oklahoma head coach coming from Loyola Chicago. I'm going to go with the Sooners here to survive a very close 12-5 uh, matchup. You know, the 12s like to beat the 5s a lot. It happens a lot. We're going to have at least one of those. Do trust me, but I think Oklahoma gets by St. Mary's here. Next up, we got Marquette versus UC Irvine. Now, UC Irvine... Um, a pretty good team. I mean, I feel like this is a bad matchup for them because Marquette definitely has the talent on their team to be much, much better than a four seed. They have the talent on their team to be a one seed this season. So I feel like that's a bad draw for UC Irvine. I feel like Marquette is going to turn it up around this time. Tyler Kolick is an amazing guard, one of the best point guards in college basketball. Cam Jones, another really good guard. Um... Shout out to Sean Jones, a key role player for Marquette, did tear his ACL, so that sucks. But Igudaro, I don't know anyone on UC Irvine who's really going to uh, give Igudaro problems, so I am going to go with Marquette here to win this one. Next up, we do have Utah State versus Grand Canyon. Utah State's been playing very, very well in Mountain West play as of late, 
and I, I believe they are a top 25 team now. I know they're in the top 25 of my rankings that I come out with on my channel every week. Um, so they're doing work. They're doing really good work. And I, I, I definitely, you know, a six seed, they deserve it at this point. They definitely do. I really, really like this Grand Canyon team, though. Like, they have some hoopers at the guards, at the guard positions, especially Tyon Grant Foster, a absolute stud and I think that he is going to lead Grand Canyon to a first round victory over Utah State in an 11 over 6 matchup our first upset of the day next up we got Baylor versus Eastern Washington honestly I don't know too much about this Eastern Washington team this year they're a team that if Joe has them predict to make his March Madness tournament I have to maybe keep Start keeping an eye out on them 100%. Um, but I do feel like this Baylor team, um, they're well coached there by Scott Drew. I think they're disciplined enough. They have great defense, great ball movement. They're they're one of those teams consistent. I don't think they're going to get upset by Eastern Washington, so I'm going to take Baylor here to move on. Next up, we got St. John's versus Nebraska. Very, very solid 7-10 matchup. Now, Nebraska, we seen when they are on, like when they were playing Purdue, just last week and they beat Purdue their shooting was on point they have some really good three-point shooters but St. John's also has some very good wins on the season they're playing very good to start Big East play now actually as I'm recording this video I'm watching St. John's versus Seton Hall St. John's not playing very well um, but that doesn't necessarily change my opinion of this game I still think that St. John's is the better team, the better coach team, there by Rick Pitino. I think they play in the better league. I think the Big East is definitely tougher than the Big 12. I think that pays dividends here. I am going to go with the Johnnies here to move on to the second round. Next up, we got Tennessee versus Winthrop. Shout out to Winthrop, man. If they make the tournament again, um, their coach should definitely be considered to get a promotion. I know Winthrop fans, if you're out there, you don't want to hear that. Um, but he's been doing work. They are in the tournament consistently, um, playing good basketball in their league. Like, shout out to Winthrop for sure. I am going to go with Tennessee, however. I'm not going to pick a ten, uh, 15 over a 2 here in this position. I think Tennessee is an excellent uh, team this year. I just watched them beat up on Florida um, at home. Dalton Nett is a absolute stud. He just dropped like 39 points. He's dropped over 30 in back-to-back -back games. He's been playing amazing. He He's like a six foot six shooting guard, dunk, lights out shooter, has insane cardio. You think of like Jordan Hawkins from last year on UConn's national championship team. How he can move off the ball and just tire his defenders out, chasing him around the court. And then he can just catch it anywhere, unfazed, insane amounts of stamina, and just shoot right over him. Nothing but net. They should actually make that a t-shirt. Like, Dalton Net should trademark that. Nothing but net. But put, like, the K, like, his last name, Net. I... They need to trademark that. Give me a little bit of credit if you are hearing this. Next up, we got Purdue versus Nevada. And it's tough to pick Nevada here in this position. They have some good players. But what I like about this Purdue team this year, Braden Smith, um, you know, you may not be able to tell like by the stats, but watching it, he's definitely taken a step up this year. He, he's a very good playmaker, and he's been shooting the three ball very, very well, which I think is a, a very important part from like last year to this year. They also have a new piece who's been playing a great, uh, a much bigger role than last year is Lance Jones. Lance Jones at the guard position has been playing great for Purdue. I think that he is the X factor for them on if they can go far. You know you got Zach Eady. Um, you know Brandon Smith's playing better. And I think Lance Jones is the key for Purdue, though, this season. But I am going to pick them over Nevada and make it to the Sweet 16 if I can type. So Purdue moving on. Next up, we do have Oklahoma versus Marquette. Five versus four matchups. Always 
a very fun matchup to see here in the second round if the five and the four both survive. And honestly, I'm definitely leaning Marquette here. I think they just have the more talented roster this year. Um, I think Tyler Kolick, Cam Jones, they can play some very good defense on Oklahoma's really good guards. And yeah, I like Marquette. I like Marquette here a lot in this matchup to move on for a rematch from earlier in the season, which was a very good game between Marquette and Purdue in the second round. Next up, we do have Grand Canyon going up against Baylor. And I really like this Grand Canyon team a lot. I think Tyon Grant Foster will be the best player on the court in this matchup. I know, I know, uh, Baylor has some good players, especially Jacoby Walters. He is a stud, stud freshman, but I think Tyon Grant Foster, I give him the edge. I think that he great players make great plays, can pull off some great upsets, and Grand Canyon moves on. How about those Lopes 11 seed making it to the Sweet 16? Next up, we got St. John's versus Tennessee, and as much as this Johnny's team that I like, they're playing pretty well, Tennessee... Here's the thing. Tennessee always plays great defense. Um, they always, you know, can have some decent big men play. Um, no matter who's at the forward position or the center position for them, it always feels like Tennessee can get some good play out of their front court. And this year, they have a healthy, uh, they have a healthy Sakai Ziggler. They have Dalton Nett, who is a transfer from Northern Colorado, who's been playing lights out, maybe player of the year in college basketball at this point. He's playing that great. And they've always kind of struggled with scoring on offense. I feel like this year seems different. I am going to go with Tennessee here to move on. Next up, we have our Sweet 16 matchups in our first region. It is Purdue versus Marquette and I feel like you know same as earlier in the year I really I, I think I like Purdue in this matchup it was a very close game earlier in the year I feel like you can get much of the same here I think Braden Smith will maybe even can get better over the season which I think can help I really like Lance Jones I think he was the X factor I think Sean uh Jones on Marquette um actually was the X factor for Marquette as far as his speed, able to get points off the bench. Um, still got guys like Stevie Mitchell who could be an X factor for Marquette, but with that Sean Jones injury, I think I like Purdue to take it here in this rematch as well. So give me Purdue to make it to the Elite Eight. I know, crazy, right? After what happened last year, you know, kind of crazy. Bold putting them in the Elite Eight, but you know, they are the top overall seed. I do kind of like their path at this point. It would not surprise me if Marquette beat them there, but honestly, I kind of like their path. I'm going to take Purdue here. Now, Grand Canyon versus Tennessee. It would not surprise me if Tennessee were to lose here. Um, I can remember two off the top of my head Tennessee teams that were really good that made it to the Sweet 16 and lost to a team they probably should not have. And one of them was last year after they beat Duke in the second round. They went on to lose to, I think it was FAU. Um, now, FAU, a very good team. Um, but I think Tennessee definitely should have probably handled their business in that game last year and made it to the Elite Eight. Also, 2018, Loyola Chicago, that made it to the Final Four. Very good Tennessee team in 2018. Made it to the Sweet 16. Lost to Loyola Chicago, who was an 11 seed, who made it to the Final Four. Um, so it's kind of weird they have similar paths there. Um, Loyola and FAU, both 11 seeds that made it to uh, the Final Four. Or FAU was actually a 9 seed, I think. Um, so I was wrong about that. But still, they both beat Tennessee in the Sweet 16. And, you know, Grand Canyon sitting there as an 11 seed. Another team looking to make a deep run. Can Tennessee break this curse? I, I told you guys, I feel like this Tennessee team's a little bit different. I'm going to take them and trust them here to get the win over Grand Canyon. And a little bit boring, but we got our one and two seed here in the Elite Eight. 
and an awesome matchup. I mean, two of the best players in college basketball, Dalton Nett going up against uh, Zach Eady. You know, different positions, so they're not going to be guarding each other. But I feel like Tennessee does have the matchups to maybe be able to slow down um, Zach Eady in this game. It's going to take Braden Smith, Lance Jones, Fletcher Lawyer, maybe a Trey Kaufman Wren, um, get in there and get some threes um, off the bench as a big. I definitely think Purdue has more depth. Tennessee, you know, they got really good guards. Vescovi, Ziegler, they could definitely guard um, Purdue's guard. I think Zach Eady does have a big game here. I mentioned earlier, I do think Tennessee has good front court defense. They do match up well with Purdue. But I could definitely see Purdue getting by here in this one. I am going to pick the Boilermakers to move on to the Final Four. I just think Tennessee, you know, they got Josiah James. Uh, I just don't... I think I think Zach Eady, if he can get to the Elite Eight here against Tennessee, I feel like he can have a massive game. I could see Dalton Nett having a great game as well, but they're going to play him tight. I could see if Purdue can kind of double team at times Dalton Nett, play him very, very tough, play him hard, make somebody else beat them. I don't know if Tennessee, even though they got guys like Ziegler, uh, Vescovi, I don't know if they have it in them um, to take over a game if they kind of take out Dalton Nett. So I think that's the game plan for Purdue, and I think if they can execute that, Zach Eady has a big game. They can get by them and make it to the final four. So now let's go down to our bottom left region and get to the final four there. So we got Kansas as our one seed in this region going up against Western Illinois. I do have Kansas winning here. I don't think we'll see any 16 over ones this year. I hope we do, but I don't think we will. <laughs> Next up, we got Utah versus Seton Hall. Both very good teams, but Seton Hall has been on a roll so far i think now they're five and one in uh the big east now that they just beat st john's playing fantastic shaheen holloway is on a mission we saw what he can do in march if he can get there with st peter's made it all the way to the elite eight as a 15 seed this will be his first tourney as the seton hall head coach and i am going to pick seton hall here to move on to the second round Derry richmond a absolute stud i will say Kadari richmond has been an absolute stud um and yeah i like seton hall a lot here in this game so we got alabama going up here against either miami or boise state and alabama alabama they've been playing pretty well as of late it seems like kind of all their losses have been to really good teams early in the year but now in sec play they're playing pretty good uh grant nelson on the squad mark sears you know, they got some hoopers on the team for sure. Going up against either Miami or Boise. Boise's been playing very good lately. That's why they got themselves a bid here. Um, you know, just last week before they got them a couple of wins, you would say, yeah, Boise probably not going to make the tournament. Uh, and there's so many good teams in the Mountain West. They're not one of them. Well, they, they're getting back into that conversation. But Miami, even though they're not playing that well right now, I still like them if they can get to March uh nigel pack uh poplar you got uh norchad omir which turns up in march like omir in march i could see him going off and that's the matchup i think miami beats boise here in the uh 12 matchup to get that seed miami versus alabama grant nelson versus norchad omir could be a treat to watch and i am going to pick a 12 over a 5 here and go with I'm going to go with Miami here to upset Alabama here in the first round. Next up, we got Creighton versus Sanford. Honestly, Sanford's been playing very good basketball as of late. They are killing it in the Southern Conference, and I like them a ton. Um, what's his name? Accor, Accor on their team absolutely killing it i think he had like 34 or so tonight against western carolina playing amazing and 
as much as I really like this Creighton team, I kind of want to take a 13 over 4 here in this situation. Like, Sanford is a pretty solid team. They got some good players. Creighton, I mean, you got to watch out. Like, Ryan Cockburner is such a good center, especially on defense, man. Um, Trey Alexander's a good defender. Baylor Shireman can light it up. I could see them going far. And I like Creighton as a team. I like Creighton a lot. I want to see them go far. They've gone far, you know, over the past couple years. They made their first Sweet 16. I think last year they made their first ever Elite Eight. I think this is the time where Creighton finally gets upset here in the first round. And I'm going to go with Samford here to upset them. 13 over 4, our biggest upset so far here today. Next up, we got San Diego State versus either Wake or Ohio State, Wake Forest or Ohio State. Wake Forest, you know, not been playing too bad as of late. Um, actually look pretty good. I just never trust them. It always seems like they're right on the cusp of making the tournament, but never actually do. If they can get in, I definitely would like to see them get a win. Um, the, I definitely think Ohio State probably better than Wake. I would pick Ohio State to win that 11 seed matchup. And then whoever wins that game, I got San Diego State coming out. I think they're way too experienced, way too talented. Jaden Ladee has been playing lights out one of the best players in college basketball this year give me san diego state especially with their defense man to move on there in that one next up we got kentucky going up against the 14 seeded oakland um fun matchup here i mean i feel like oakland has always been a team um that i can remember the past couple of years who has been able to get upsets um early in the season you know they play uh, they get paid pretty much to play these power five, power six level teams. And, you know, it seems like they win one of them every year. And I think that they have already this year as well. So can they beat Kentucky, though? Well, no, I, I don't think they do. I don't think they do. I'm going to take Kentucky here. I think they have way too much talent, um, a lot of really good freshmen, um, Antonio Reeves, uh, who is a senior who's been playing very, very good basketball. Um, Trey Mitchell, who's a fifth, maybe even a sixth year senior at this point, playing really good. And they have all the pieces to to go far in March, you know, if they can. It's going to be a tough second round matchup for him against San Diego State. That's going to be an, an amazing game. But. I am going to go with Kentucky to beat Oakland here in this one. Next up, we got Iowa State going up against South Carolina, our 10 seed. And this one, I don't really have to think about too much. I, I don't trust South Carolina, especially in a big game, especially against a really good team in Iowa State. I am going to take the Cyclones here to move on. Next up, we got Arizona versus Sam Houston. And the thing about Arizona, they're a really good team. Um, I, I'm a big fan of Kylan Boswell. Um, Caleb Love's been playing very good as well. They do tend to struggle against some worser teams. I mean, Washington State is not terrible, but they lost to them. Stanford is pretty terrible. They lost to them. But when they play really good teams, they tend to win, I've noticed. and But I am going to pick Arizona here. I'm not going to pick them to lose to um, a 15 seed second year in a row that would really suck there for the Wildcats next up we do have Kansas versus Seton Hall and I could honestly see Seton Hall winning this game the only problem is I don't know if they have the bigs to stop not only Hunter Dickinson but KJ Adams as well as much as I really want to take Seton Hall and I do think it would be a close game I think Harris Jr. at point guard, he's one of the best point guards in college basketball. Um, you know, even though he doesn't really need to be uh, scoring at times, he can if he wants to, and he is, in fact, one of the best point guards in college basketball, like I said. And I just think Kansas's front court is going to be too much. I, I came into this video really thinking Seton Hall, I was going to have them go far, but that's a tough matchup for him. I think they'll play it close, as close as they can. But I am going to take Kansas here to move on. Next up, we do have Miami versus Sanford, our 12 versus 13 matchup, which is a very fun matchup. And 
I could see Samford keep on moving, man. I could see Samford keep on moving, but Miami is a very experienced team. You know, they've made back-to-back elite eights, including a Final Four last year. And I could definitely see them, you know, keep on moving past Samford. So, you know what, let's have a little bit of fun. I'm going to have Samford move on to the Sweet 16. I think, you know, it's not impossible. They're playing very good basketball right now. And let's let's go with Sanford, man. Let's have some fun. You got to have, you know, some underdogs make it to the Sweet 16. I know Miami is a 12 seed, uh, a high seed as well. But um, let's go with Sanford for sure. Next up, we got San Diego State going up against Kentucky here. This would have to be one of the best second round matchups of the year 100%. I mean, whoever wins this game definitely has potential to go really far, maybe even final four far. This region is actually very very strong 100%. Um San Diego State, Kentucky, who is going to get the win? Um I think a key matchup here, Jaden Ladee, whoever they want to put on him whether it's uh probably Rob Dillingham maybe. Um, they could put a guy like Trey Mitchell on him just for defense. Interesting, for sure. Um, I think that Reed Shepard could be a guy who could have a big game in this one. It's tough. I hate that I have to make this decision in the round of 32. But I am going to go with Kentucky to get it done. I am going to go with Kentucky to get it done. I, I really like San Diego State. I'm happy they made it to the national championship last year. I just think Kentucky is really good. I think that they have more depth, maybe. I think they have more depth. San Diego State is a very good defensive team. Kentucky, you know, they're going to try to score, keep it a little bit more high pace. I think they can get it done. Next up, we got Iowa State versus Arizona. And this is a very good 7-2 matchup. And... I, you know, I don't know who I want to pick here. Um, I don't know who I want to pick here. I think the key matchup here, Taman Lipsy uh, going up against Kylan Boswell. Two very good point guards that I really like to watch. And then you got Caleb Love. Uh, you got Omar Ballo. I think Iowa State actually matches up really well with Arizona and can play some great defense. I'm going to go with the Cyclones. The seven seed to knock off the two here in the second round. Give me Iowa State to move on. So we have our sweet 16 matchups here in this region. We do have Kansas and we do have Sanford, our 13 seed, who is absolutely killing it. The Sanford Bulldogs going crazy. At this point, a core core is your favorite player's favorite player. He is on a absolute mission and Sanford just has really good guards in general I just don't know if they have the bigs to compete with Hunter Dickinson KJ Adams that's kind of the same thing I said about Seton Hall as I wanted to see Seton Hall kind of go far um, but they kind of met their match here however sometimes whenever these underdogs these high seeded teams they get some momentum they make it to the Sweet 16. They start thinking, we are as good as these teams. And they get a game plan, you know, to try to stop Hunter Dickinson. Um, you know, they play Harris very tight. You know, it's time tough because I didn't even mention, like, Kevin McCuller, who's going to be a stud in this game. Marco Jackson. You got a lot of dudes to watch out for in this game. But... As, you know, you got Bill Self, one of the greatest head coaches of all time. But this would be one of the best upsets of all time. And I need to see it, man. I need to see. So I need something crazy to happen in my bracket. And I know you guys are going to let me know there's no way this is going to happen. But crazy things happen in March Madness. I am going to go with the Samford Bulldogs to upset the great Kansas Jayhawks, who is a blue bud, blood, has been one of the best teams in college basketball, one of the best programs in college basketball, like, since forever. And Sanford knocks them out in the Sweet 16 to go home, get them out of here. Sanford to the Elite Eight, 
as a 13 seed. Let's get it. And our next matchup, we do have Kentucky and we do have the Iowa State Cyclones. Iowa State, you know, just knocked off Arizona. Feeling good. Um, Kentucky, this would be a great matchup. You know, I think it depends on how good these freshmen play players play. You know, Rob Dillingham, DJ Wagner, Reed Shepard. How are they going to play? And I think that Taman Lipsy, I'm a big fan of his. Not only does he average, you know, 13, 14 points a game, six rebounds, six assists, but he also averages three and a half, almost four steals a game. Such a absolute stud. And not to mention, Iowa State has some other really good guards as well as well as really good freshmen forwards. Like, I'm going to go with the Cyclones to pull off this upset. Seven over a three seed. Iowa State makes it to the Elite Eight. This is kind of like my crazy upset region there's always one region where you're just like what which teams made the elite eight out of that region which team made the final four this is this this is my region for this bracket and it is our 13 seed versus our seven seed for a chance to go to the final four and as much as i want sanford to beat back to back big 12 teams i think this is where they're run finally comes to an end and i am going to have the iowa state cyclones make it in to the final four i like this team a lot i think they have potential to go far and i know they're getting beat by byu right now who is also a very good team on the road but this iowa state team is very good let's have them make a run they're a sleeper team for me right now let's have them make a run and also like for an example of what i'm talking about when when teams like sanford can build momentum a great example is St. Peter's from just a couple of years ago. Um, St. Peter's made it to the Sweet 16. They they already beat a team like Kentucky. And they had to go up against a powerhouse team in Purdue. Which that Purdue team had Jaden Ivey. Um, had, had a Zach Eady that was younger. like And they, they did it. Made it to the Elite Eight first ever 15 seed. And, you know, Sanford. Why can't they do that against Kansas? That's that, Let's do it, man. It is possible. It is possible. We're having fun, but it is possible. Next up, we do have um, our top right region. We do have UConn versus Eastern Kentucky. I'm going to take UConn easily in this. I love, love, love this UConn team this year. Once again, they are they are amazing. They are a really good team. Texas A&M versus Michigan State. You know, both teams have been struggling. You know, you could argue, do either of these teams deserve to be in the tournament at this point? Um, I think, yeah, probably, you know, they definitely have the talent to, I, I don't really trust Buzz Williams and Texas A&M to do good in March Madness. You know, they, they've let me down for sure. Um, I think I probably picked them against Penn State last year. And even though they have really good players, I think Michigan State has the better roster. I think they have potential to go far, uh, given the right matchups. Give me Michigan State over Texas A&M. Definitely trusting Tom Izzo over a Texas A&M team that, consistently has been disappointing the past couple of years um next up we got clemson versus mcneese state and i am going to go with mcneese state here to uh upset clemson i mean clemson they look so good for a little bit bit and then they just oh they started stinking it up like what happened to clemson man um and right now they're not playing good i don't trust them and mcneese state a sneaky 12 seed Give me them to move on. Next up, we got Memphis versus the Drexel Dragons. Um, are we going to see our second 13 over a four upset? I'm going to say no. I think Memphis is playing very good right now, and they're led by veteran point guard Javon Quinterly in his 13th year of eligibility. And JQ has been playing very good, but also David Jones. David Jones is one of the more underrated players in college basketball. They have one of the best front courts in college basketball. Memphis Tigers move on. Next up, we got BYU versus Northwestern, and man, this is going to be a very solid game. Like, Northwestern is inconsistent, especially in Big Ten play. I feel like most teams are inconsistent in Big Ten play, um, but, you know, BYU has been shocking. Like, I was surprised how good they played against Iowa State today, and they play really good at home. I'm going to trust Northwestern, you know, their experience. They got a, a, a March Madness win 
last year with uh, Boo Booey and company. They're bringing him back. Uh, they, they brought in the transfer from Princeton uh, that played really good in the tournament last year. He's been playing very good for him. Give me Northwestern here in this game. Next up, we got Duke versus Vermont. I'd love to see the Catamounts upset Duke, but I am going to go with the Blue Devils here. I think Kyle Filipowski been on a roll, and surprisingly, even though he plays for Duke, which is one of the biggest brands in college basketball, one of the biggest programs, I don't really hear too many people talking about how good Kyle Filipowski has been playing this year. I think he's going to tear up the tournament. Give me Duke here in this one. Next up, we do have Villanova versus Texas Tech. And this is a tough one. I feel like Justin Moore, Eric Dixon, if they can make it into the tournament, man, they can tear they can tear things up for sure. Villanova is definitely a sleeper for me. Uh, they play good against good teams. They play not so good against bad teams for some reason. And that needs to change for sure. But even though I love this Texas Tech team because I love Joe Toussaint, I want to see Joe Toussaint make it to the Final Four as a WVU fan. Like, I loved Joe Toussaint as a person, as a player, whenever he was playing for my favorite team in West Virginia. And I want to see him do great for Texas Tech. And him and Pop Isaacs, very fun backcourt to watch. But I am going to take Villanova here to get the W. Uh, I just think Justin Moore, Eric Dixon, they're a sleeper, man. They're a sleeper for sure. Wisconsin versus Southern University. Wisconsin has been on a tear. I talked about no one's been consistent in the Big 12 uh, ever. The past couple of years, well, Wisconsin has. They've been playing great basketball. AJ Store, another super underrated player. They got an amazing front court as well. Yeah, give me Wisconsin to move on here. Next up, UConn versus Michigan State. Actually a very good matchup. Like, if this actually were a second-round matchup it, when it was March Madness, I would maybe think about taking Michigan State, you know, depending on how they played towards the end of the season. And a lot of this would probably be a popular pick for people to make, especially considering, you know, almost the past couple, like, what, five, six years, the defending national champion has lost in the first or second round. So it would be definitely be a popular pick however i really like this yukon team and even though michigan state has really good players aj hogard tyson walker um they they, they have a really good players uh some really good depth yukon is going to have donovan Klingon back who's going to be a big part i i really like alex caravan i think he could be um having a huge game in this one tristan newton is a, not only an excellent player but an excellent defender i feel like he him versus Tyson Walker or him versus AJ Hogard, whoever he's guarding is going to be an awesome matchup. You got Cam Spencer in there as well. This would definitely be a popular upset pick. I could see it happening, but I am going to go with the UConn Huskies. I just feel, I feel good about UConn this year. I feel good about them. They're playing great. Give me them to move on. McNeese State versus Memphis. Can McNeese State keep up uh, the upset and be the second 13 seed we have here in the uh, Sweet 16 in this video? I don't think so. I'm going to go with Memphis. I, I like Memphis here to to make the Sweet 16 with this uh, draw that they got. I really like them to make the Sweet 16. I think they got a good draw. Next up, we got Northwestern versus Duke. Battle of the nerds. Look at these nerds here in the round of 32. Um, I just don't really trust Northwestern too, too much to go far, especially against such a good team in Duke. Um, I really like Kyle Filipowski, Tyrese Proctor. I, I really like those players. I think Duke's. I think Duke's gonna move on. I think Duke's gonna get past Northwestern. Next up, we got Villanova versus Wisconsin. A very solid matchup where I could actually see Villanova potentially getting past Wisconsin here. And even though Wisconsin's playing so good with like Tyler Wall um, down low, I feel like Eric Dixon could definitely definitely outplay him and play great and i'm gonna do it i'm gonna have villanova move on here uh to the sweet 16 past wisconsin our second two seed to lose in the second round yeah our second one yeah arizona and wisconsin going down in the second round for me next up we got yukon versus memphis and as good as Memphis, you know, this might actually be a really good matchup for UConn. You know, as good as Memphis's front court is, 
to go up against Alex Caravan and, and Donovan Klingon, especially, you know, even though Caravan can stretch the floor and hit down threes from pretty much anywhere, yeah, this might be a good matchup for UConn. You know, I could see JQ playing a really hard uh, defending here on Tristan Newton. Um, it's going to take a guy like one of these UConn role players, maybe like a Cam Spencer, um, to 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 really or or Stefan Castle even to really turn up. Maybe both of them to turn up in this one, step it up. Alex Kierban knock down some threes, and maybe Donovan Klingon can get some of these Memphis forwards like David David Jones especially into foul trouble. I'm going to take UConn though. I'm going to take UConn. I really like them this year, man. Duke versus Villanova. You know, Villanova, they play good against very good teams, man. I could see them start to make a little bit of a run. I could see it, man, but I am going to go with Duke here to knock off Villanova. I, I just think Kyle Filipowski, he's not going to get bullied down low by Eric Dixon. He's going to play great, and I like this Duke team. Give me Duke here to move on. And then for our Elite Eight matchup to take our third spot in the Final Four, we do have UConn versus Duke and I do think Alex Caravan Donovan Klingon match up really well with Kyle Filipowski and, and Mark Mitchell down low here for Duke um, I think that Tristan Newton is I think Tristan Newton's the better point guard than Jeremy Roach um, Tyrese Proctor could have a pretty good game here in this one but I still think the combination of Cam Spencer and Stefan Castle uh, match that out so I am going to go with UConn actually here to make it on to the final four as well so we got two one seeds and a seven seed in our final four as well and we got one region left and then our final four predictions so North Carolina our one seed here we got North Carolina versus I want to say that's North Carolina Central I don't I'm not really exactly sure NCCU um, or either uh, maybe Central Connecticut don't quote me on that, but I'm going to go with UNC here to move on to the second round. Um, RJ Davis playing at another, on another level this year without um, Caleb Love being there. Harrison Ingram playing great. Uh, their forward pickup through transfer portal that they got from Stanford. He's playing outstanding. Um, exactly the kind of player that they needed. And, yeah, give me UNC to move on. They're playing amazing, amazing basketball right now. Next up, we got Ole Miss versus TCU. And without question, I like TCU here in this matchup. I mean, Ole Miss is a pretty good team. They're well coached there by Chris Beard. Um, you know, besides the character things with Chris Beard, he's a great basketball coach. Um, but give me Jamie Dixon. I really like Emmanuel Miller. He's been playing very good this year. Uh I almost was about to say Mike Miles. Well, he's not there anymore. I meant to say Jameer Nelson Jr. is uh, a player that I think could definitely turn up during March for the Horned Frogs as well. Give me TCU here to move on. Next up, we got Dayton versus Drake. And I do like this Drake team. I do, uh, do kind of root for Drake a little bit for some reason. I, I just kind of like uh, the Drake Bulldogs there in Des Moines, Iowa. But... I really like Dayton even more. As you can see, I got the Dayton Flyers shirt on, and there's no way I'm taking Drake, especially because Drake isn't even my favorite team in their league. I like Indiana State this year to make the tournament. Give me Dayton to move on. Um, Holmes, big game. Darren Holmes, big game in this one. Illinois versus Akron. And I don't really... I think Illinois, even without Terrence Chan Jr., you know, they've been playing pretty well. And I think that it will be enough to get past Akron. So I am going to go with Illinois here in this one. Um, they have some guys who have really stepped up as shooters for sure. Um, yeah. Next up, we got FAU versus Princeton. FAU not playing great. You know, I thought that they would be playing much better but they are definitely a team that has been prone to losing to some teams that they should not be. So, and Princeton's a very good team, and I, this to me screams upset. Give me Princeton. 
to upset FAU here. I, I think Princeton's a good basketball team. They only have one loss on the season so far. FAU's been struggling. They've been struggling against teams that they definitely should not be struggling against, like Charlotte. Uh, losing to Charlotte, not a good look. Um, I do think FAU still has potential to turn things around um, and go far in the tournament. But I feel like my expectations and my ceiling that I have for FAU has definitely went down. And right now they're not playing the best. I'm going to have Princeton upset them. Next up we got Auburn versus Troy. Battle of the state of Alabama there, two Alabama programs. Give me the Auburn Tigers to get it done. I love what Auburn has been doing lately. They have been playing amazing, amazing, amazing basketball. Uh, Aiden Holloway, an amazing freshman point guard. Janai Broom, Jalen Williams, an amazing front court that they have down low. Uh, Katie Johnson, a veteran presence who is definitely... Um, like you can tell is like a heart and soul player, hustle player for this team. Um, you can get a tough bucket for you, can play great defense. I like this Auburn team. Bruce Pearl, an amazing head coach. Give me the Tigers. Next up, Colorado State versus Oregon. You know, Oregon's been playing better as of late, but I want to go with Colorado State. I like Isaiah Stevens a lot. Um, I think he's definitely going to be the best player on the floor in this game. Give me the Rams. Next up, Houston versus St. Peter's. As much as I'd like to see some Peter magic here, once again, the Peacocks, uh, the Peter Cox, uh, move on and make another Elite Eight. This Houston defense is going to be too good, man. LJ Cryer, transfer from Baylor, going to go off. Him and Jamal Shedd, very underrated backcourt. Give me Houston to move on. Next up, we got North Carolina versus TCU. This would be a very fun matchup. Um, I think Armando Baycott is a mismatch problem here for TCU here in this one. You know, no more Eddie Lampkin. He's over in uh, uh, he's over in Boulder, uh, chilling with Deion Sanders. You know, probably not, but he is in Boulder now, and, and I think that Armando Baycott has a big game in this one. R.J. Davis could have some problems with TCU's guards. Harrison Ingram and Emmanuel Miller is the matchup in this one, and I actually think Harrison Ingram could possibly even win that matchup, so I am going to go with North Carolina here to move on. Uh, next up, we got uh, Dayton versus Illinois, and Coleman Hawkins, Darren Holmes. That is the matchup, and I like Holmes. I like Dayton. Give me the Flyers. Fly on to the Sweet 16. Let's go, baby. Next up, we got Princeton versus Auburn. Can Princeton, as an 11 seed, move on to their second Sweet 16 in a row, as they were in the Elite Eight, actually, last year? Um, no, I don't think so. I, I like Auburn a lot, as I was talking about them earlier. I think they're going to be too much for Princeton, especially because Princeton... You know, they play great for their league. They got a good win over a very, very good FAU team. Um, but I think Auburn's going to be too much for them. I think Auburn is, you know, arguably, it's hard to say they're the best team in the SEC with Tennessee and Kentucky. But there can be an argument for that. I think you could, you would have to listen to an argument for that. I, I would say probably Tennessee is the best team in the SEC right now. But Auburn is definitely playing like it. Next up, we got Colorado State versus Houston. Um, are we going to see our third two seed go down in the second round? I could see it happening here. Um, but I think LJ Cryer, Jamal Shedd, very good defenders. You got a lot of really good guard defenders on Houston that can slow down Isaiah Stevens. They're going to make somebody else beat them. And Colorado State does have some other good players. I don't think they're going to be able to keep up with Houston in this defense. And Kelvin Sampson is consistently in the Sweet 16. I just don't see Colorado State being able to do it. Next up, North Carolina versus Dayton. Holmes, Baycott, down low. Who is going to win that matchup? Give me Dayton. Give me Dayton to upset North Carolina here in the Sweet 16 and move on to the Elite Eight. I like it. We only got Darren Holmes, but you got Nate Santos who can stretch the floor as a forward. You got really good guard depth who can play make. 
and are going to play tough defense on guys like R.J. Davis. I feel like if they if J, if Darren Holmes can win the matchup against Baycott and they can make somebody else other than R.J. Davis beat them, I feel like Dayton can win this game as a team. Give me the Flyers. Give me the Flyers to move on to the Elite Eight. Next up, we got Auburn. We got Houston. This just feels like a real defensive gutty matchup, and I love it. And I actually, I really like Auburn's front court advantage here with Jalen Williams, Janai Broom, and I like it a lot. And I'm not so sure that Houston's guards are necessarily better. I mean, LJ Cryer probably better than katie johnson but i could see katie johnson locking him down and then you can say i could say aiden holloway as a freshman might be better than jamal shed give me auburn three over a two seed knock out houston here in the sweet 16 so our elite eight matchup is our five seed and our three seed dayton versus auburn and I think this is where I'm going to have the Flyers run come to an end. I think Jalen Williams, <laughs> Janai Broom, two excellent defenders. I think they match up really well against Dayton and, J- and Darren Holmes. I like Auburn here to move on. I think that Auburn just matches up really well with Dayton, like, which sucks for Dayton here to possibly make it to the Final Four. And what a run it was for them. They never got the real opportunity to uh, make a run in their tournament when they had Obi Toppin because the tournament got canceled. So it's good to see them make a little Elite Eight run here. So we have our two one seeds making it to the Final Four in our top regions, Purdue and UConn, respectively. And then in our bottom regions, we got a little bit of chaos as we have our seven seed, Iowa State, and our three seed, Auburn, making it in. So Purdue, Iowa State, very fun matchup. You know, Iowa State is going to uh, throw everything they can at Purdue to try to knock off Zach, yeah, slow down Zach Eady. You know, they got, uh, what's his name, Momovic. I want to think I'm pronouncing it semi-close. Um, the freshman forward, He he's kind of skinny, you know, at least, you know, he's in good shape, but I'm saying he's kind of skinny as far as, you know, compared to Zach Eady. Um but everybody's going to have to chip in try to slow down Zach Eady. I, I think Iowa State could definitely potentially do it. But I think Purdue matches up pretty well with them. I'm going to go with the Boilermakers here to make it to the national championship game. Next up, we do have uh, UConn versus Auburn. And I would like to see Auburn knock this one out. I'm very high on both these teams, UConn and Auburn. I'm very, very high on them. This is like... Those two regions, I like who I have coming out of them. I feel like these two teams playing very well lately, have very solid teams and rosters, have very solid coaches. I feel comfortable picking them to make it to the Final Four. Iowa State is kind of like my sleeper pick. Purdue, you can never really trust. But UConn-Auburn, I feel comfortable about them making it to the Final Four. You know? I think I'm going to have to pick UConn in this one. I feel like Auburn finally has a matchup in the front court where it's going to be a little bit tough for them uh, with Donovan Klingon and Alex Caraban down low. And then I, I definitely think UConn has the advantage in the guards here. I think Tristan Newton is probably better than Aiden Holloway. Stephon Castle is only going to keep getting better. And, you know, if he had more playing time... You know, if Tristan Newton wasn't there, I feel like Stephon Castle would be putting up a lot more numbers. Um, he's, it's not like he's putting up bad numbers by any means, especially for a freshman, but give me UConn. I know it's kind of boring having two one seeds in the national championship, but I feel like these two teams are the two best teams in the country. Like, right now, I feel that way, like, a little bit by far. And so it's hard for me to not have these teams in the championship right here. It is hard to trust Purdue. Um, I'm going to go out right and say it. I am going to have UConn be your first back-to-back champion since uh, the Florida Gators did it back in, what was it, 07, 08. Um, 
And yeah, you know, it has not been good the past so many years for the defending national champion. I feel like this UConn team is built to go farther. They have a returning guard and Tristan Newton, who is only playing better from last year. Um, they got they kind of filled the spots that they lost with Cam Spencer as a transfer, uh, Stephon Castle as a five-star freshman. Uh, they return in uh, Donovan Klingon, who is an absolute beast down low, and that would be so fun to watch in the national championship or even just any time is Donovan Klingon versus Zach Eady. And, and I think Caravan just has a massive, massive game, also returning from last year's national championship team. Give me UConn Huskies to go back-to-back -back at this point. I feel really great about this. Let me know what you guys think about my bracket, uh, the sleeper runs, the storylines, the fun of it all, the, the Cinderella's, you know, Sanford's in the Elite Eight. Um, but, yeah, guys, let me know what you guys think. Uh, as far as the matchups, I think that as good as Braden Smith has been playing, I think Tristan Newton can is going to outplay him. Uh, Donovan Klingon is definitely – the biggest guy other than Zach Eady that, you know, maybe the biggest guy Zach Eady's seen to play against. Um, so that would be very fun to watch. Uh, I really like Caravan over a guy like Mason Gillis for sure. And Lance Jones versus guys like Cam Spencer and Stefan Castle as far as like role players. I feel better about Stefan Castle. So I like UConn in this game. Whenever I kind of work it all out, give me the Huskies to win national championship. Subscribe if you guys are new. We're going to be doing these every two weeks and as we get really close to March every single week um, until we get to our official March Madness prediction. So if you guys are college basketball fans, you guys want to keep up with March Madness, my power rankings that come out every Monday, all that kind of stuff, subscribe, drop a like. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching.